Welcome back to the great retro header build off. On today's episode, I'm going to tackle the BMW's cooling system by upgrading it to some AN fittings and lines. Let's get to it. So on the previous episode, we completed the exhaust, but we never actually fired up the car. And we kind of left you guys hanging, so let's start it so you can see what it sounds like. The king goes skiddy king pop pop and the poop 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 boom skia to to cool cool boom 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 So let's get started on building the system. Over here in front of me, I've laid out everything that I plan on using. Anything from the tools, the AN fittings, I got a couple of hoses with me. I'm going to show you guys what is important, what you need to focus on, and some of the reasons why I picked out some of these things. The first thing I'm going to start tackling is the old heater hoses. Now the heater hoses on the car are 50 years old. Vibrant offers some nice heater hoses and I'm going to put on some T-bolt clamps because I'm not a fan of the way worm gear clamps look. After I pulled off the old heater hose, I measured the OD of the fitting to make sure I had the right size. In this case, it was 1.25 inches. I measured the length by putting the old heater hose next to the new one and marking it with tape. I then cut it straight down so that I had the straightest possible edge. Once cut, I put the T-bolt clamp on the hose first and then I slid it back over the original fitting. And then I tightened it down. So step one is to get a piece of cardboard cut out into the shape of the shroud that I want to build. There's OEM rad mounting points right here on all four corners. So this shroud is going to be mounted to the OEM location so that the radiator can get pulled out very easily if I need to access or service anything around this area. Got to keep in mind the clearances. There is a pulley that's going to be sitting right there. The fan that was on here is gone. I took it off, removed it. It's never going back on. I'm kind of going to explain to you how I did this radiator setup. It's mounted at a slanted angle and that's because the front of the car is also slanted at an angle. Now, it's very difficult to fit one of these thicker rads in at a perfectly straight line. Now, ideally, I would want that. Uh, however, it, it hits the bottom. That's, it's got the protruding front. Now, we got Aaron to weld up a bung at the bottom here. This bung's gonna curve around with a 180 fitting and go to the thermostat on the other side. And he also welded an AN bung up here at the top, which will be going over here to the water neck that he built for us. I haven't put it in yet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this now and I'm gonna place it on a 1 8 thick aluminum sheet. And then we're gonna cut it out with the plasma. And I, when I say we, I mean Aaron. Aaron's gonna help me out. As much as I wanna do this alone, that dude's got the skill to do it and he's got the steady hands. I ended up purchasing a friend's Speed Factory radiator off his sport front wheel drive build. Uh, now, this car uses an external thermostat rather than an internal one like most cars use nowadays. Uh, I had Aaron weld on a couple of Dash 16 AN bungs onto the top and the bottom so that the bottom piece connects to the radiator and the top goes to the water neck. You're probably wondering why I never used an AN connection over here. I used a vibrant silicone four ply coupler with the T bolt clamps which still looks pretty cool, pretty neat, and it allows that flexibility. It'll hold all the pressure, the heat, and it's made for the job. Now, this is a regular Vibram Performance fitting. Yeah, so it's got a nice little recess for you to just make a hole and it'll actually sit in the hole. And then when you weld it, that gap will disappear and you just do a nice little beat around it. But we're welding these onto the ends of this guy. So I just took a cap, put threaded it into the cap, the cap in the lathe, put some tape around it obviously first, and then just shape the flange down a bit. So it matches that diameter. Bam, let's weld it. So we're gonna start with building a custom water neck because the old one, the old one's not the best, and uh, I kind of want to modify it. It's really pitted, it's old, it's about 50 years old, so. Aaron over here is such a nice guy. He's gonna help me build this custom water neck. Right, buddy? Oh, anything for art. 
You're the man. We are going to start off with obviously more than enough fittings that I need for this. But just like when Aaron was building the exhaust system for the car, you always kind of have to start with piecing stuff together and seeing how it works. I mean, some people might be good at it and just be like, yeah, I know this obviously needs a 90, or 180, or a uh, 120 degree. But, you know, I've only built a fluid system once in a car before, so I don't trust myself enough. Uh, the easy thing about this is anybody can do it, as long as you don't need any welding done, which is <laughs> what the bungs are for. However, if you don't know how to weld, it's okay. You could always go to a fabricator, a local fabricator, local shop, and get them to do those parts that are a little bit harder to make. Now, Aaron. That's, that's what we're replacing. We are replacing this and building a custom one right there. So I see you've already started working on... I just made a flange for it. So as you can see over here, uh, this is roughly where I want to make the cut. So I use tape to mock it up. I know I'm going to be putting the, the shear hose cutters uh, right over here in this area and just snipping that off. But uh, before I, I, I do that, I'm going to assemble this line and fitting first because I want to make sure I have the correct positioning before I make that final cut. So as you can see over here, uh, the, the lip of the hose is right up as much as it can go until, uh, until it can't go anymore. And, and now I'm gonna actually take the fitting and start assembling it. All right, so I got my fitting here. Now this is the straight section that we'll be connecting uh, directly to the thermostat where Aaron welded a bung on for me. Now, I have everything ready, set up to go. Always uh, make sure you put a little bit of lubricant to make, uh, to make things a little bit easier. And position it and you gotta keep in mind these threads have to spin in here right so I can slowly start by hand and then I'm gonna go over to the vise and start threading it in and try to get it in as much as I can by hand I don't feel like it's gonna go too far because it's a really really thick thick line here so I'm here at the vise and I got my aluminum vise jaws set inside I simply put the hose nut end into the vise jaws, make sure they're clean, and tighten it. I'm gonna give you guys a link here. I'm gonna throw up a card and show you some of the precautions you gotta take with these. You don't wanna go too tight. It's very important that you don't, otherwise you start rounding it, and why we use aluminum vise jaws uh, for this kind of install. And I take my V-wrench and I start, yeah, I can't go anymore. I've, I've done it as best as I could by hand. At this point, it's up to the V-wrench. And you'll notice that, it's as tight as it goes, dash 16 is where the V-wrench is set. Now, you'll notice that as I'm turning this, the hose is fighting and wants to turn as well. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna place my hand here at the bottom I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it as it's turning. And slowly work it. You don't have to go fast. That's how you scratch up your fittings. You don't wanna do that. The closer you get to the bottom, the more of a struggle it becomes. You just have to, you just have to send it. Gonna be a good day gonna send it. Oh, Gets to a point where the hose doesn't move anymore at the bottom. You just have to watch for it not to scratch. You keep getting, you're tightening it until you get to about a sixteenth of an inch gap. And there it is. That is assembled. Not a single scratch on it. So I put the fitting that I just assembled onto my thermostat and now I'm comparing where I wanted to cut it earlier and just taking a look to see roughly where I should be cutting it. Now, like I said, roughly this area right here 
uh, this part of the fitting is, is where the, the threading starts. So I'm just gonna mark it. Let's cut. There we go, it's installed and uh, still got some flex to it. All right, so I just finished making up this line. This 90 degree goes just at the bottom of that uh, thermostat right there. So it's gonna go in there. And this one, it goes right into that bung right over here. So it looks like it's gonna fit just perfect. Now these flexible race hoses, they have quite a bit of give to them. However, you, you can over, over stretch them and, and then kink them. And you really don't want that, you want to avoid that. If you think that's going to happen, make sure you use one of these uh, support braces that we offer. Now they do coil on the inside, they'll coil right through the whole hose and they will protect the hose from getting kinked. If you do feel that you're going to be putting the hose in, into a position or, or if you're going to have a lot of vibration where you think it might kink and, you, and you're afraid of your fluids not being able to travel, uh, be sure to consider that. Now, the other thing I want to show you guys is these are swivel. Uh, fittings so they do swivel on both sides so I mean naturally when you, you get this in the packaging it, it comes coiled together so the hose does have a bit of a natural curvature to it so you really want to consider that now I want my hose to not go underneath the the pulley that I have right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna want it to sit like that and in that case I'm going to pull the one, 180 degree over here and the 90 degree up like that because that, that 90 degree is going to sit right here on the, on the thermostat so I'm going to plug that up here and then the, the side of the rad which is just over here on this side will go right there and that natural curve right over here will protect it from from wanting to go towards the pulley. And if, if, you're, if I'm really concerned, I will put a P-clamp and hold the hose away from it. But I'm gonna first install it and see how it looks like in there before I'm, I add any P-clamps. I, I really wanna avoid drilling any holes. All right. Well, that's looking really good right now. Um, I got my lower radiator line mounted up. All the fittings are assembled. I have my upper one right here going to the water neck and the thermostat. And then I'm just left with this one right here. So you could mount it higher. The, the, the upside of having these fittings, the swivel ones, is that you can, you can position it to go a little bit higher. And then I can, I can position this one to be higher and have it pop in like that. Uh, I might do that. I'm not quite sure yet. It's a little bit flashy. And you could also have the option of going much lower. So you pop these in here and have that go under in like, kind of like a U-shape going down. But the problem is I do have a pulley right on my water pump and I don't want any interference with that. It's going to be very, very messy and dangerous if I do that. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm gonna mount it right there. I'm gonna play around for it a little bit more and get exactly the right angle I want. I mean, this angle might just work up here. And it'll be kind of cool because the motor is mounted at an angle, so it's gonna flow up and down on this angle. So I think I'm gonna go with that actually, just right there. One more thing I forgot to point out. Okay, so. These swivel, they swivel. However, when you tighten the nut, you tighten it with the, the AN wrench, V wrench, the right V jaw, or if you use the other one, if you tighten this, this is no longer moving. You will eventually tighten it because I mean, when it's tight, that's when this, the AN fitting creates a seal. Once that's tight, this is not gonna move. So find your position, use the swivel to your advantage, but once you, once you figure that out, once you figure out the angle you want, and you assemble a line, you tighten it, 
it's not gonna move from there. The fitting itself, the aluminum billet piece no longer moves. What moves is the hose itself. And that's what you wanna move. You want this to move. You don't want, you don't want the solid pieces to move. You want the flexible pieces to move. So um, I'm just gonna pick a position and then I'm gonna cut this and assemble this. Let's do it. One more thing, I, I pulled off the line that I just cut. and um, I'm actually gonna run an inner support brace on this one because I wanna show you guys how it works. I just simply put it right in there. And I'm just gonna snip it right here. And uh, I'm gonna put my fitting right on top of this end piece right here. There it is, I'm just gonna pop my, my fitting on the, onto this end. Coil is in there. It's nice and sturdy. It doesn't want to kink anymore, as you can see. Make sure you do it before you put the fitting on, because once once it's on, there's no way you're you're getting that coil, the, the inner support sleeve in there. It's actually it's actually held in place um, via via the fittings. So make sure you do that before you you put them together. I really want to bring your attention to these little, what look like Chinese finger locks, and trust me, I was already playing with them before. These are thermal sleeves that are used for uh, wires and plugs for any cars with a distributor. Now, if you have a header that looks like that, you may be a little concerned about the wires coming close. Now, I haven't mounted my heat shield in yet. I have a factory heat shield that separates this line from the actual wire. It's gonna, it's gonna pull them up a bit. So that'll make it a little bit more okay. But I did use these thermal wire sleeves to make sure I don't burn any of those rubber wires. Got my lines installed, the radiator's installed, the shroud, the header's finished, the exhaust is done on the car, everything is completed as far as we're going with the retro header build off. There's a lot to get done. I'm gonna take her home over the winter, I'm gonna pull the motor out, I'm gonna redo the intake side, I'm gonna repaint the engine bay, I'm gonna clean up the wiring, there's a lot to get done here. I'm very happy with the overall result. Uh, I couldn't have even imagined it looking this good. It, it turned out better than I thought it would. The one thing I got out of this that I can conclude with is although I thought I was kind of going to get all these lines and fittings done myself and, and I felt like I was this little fabricator that I can, I can tackle this job, I realized I still relied on my fabricator. In this case, it was Aaron. He did an awesome job welding the bungs onto the, the, the rad. I needed them relocated. Uh, he did a great job with the shroud and mounting the rad. And he obviously gave me some advice. He built this really cool water neck. So before you head out, make sure you get over to the Speed Academy channel and see what Dave and Peter were up to. I know they were kind of working on their different approach on making their cooling system on the Celica, but uh, we're going to meet up with them on the next one and we're going to compare the headers and conclude the retro header build off. See you guys then.